I just watched the Beatles documentary too. I thought it was excellent. I didn't really have any criticisms. It was kind of just footage. It was a little light on the storytelling from like a filmmaking perspective, but I guess what more can you ask for than just spending nine hours with the Beatles? <laughs> anyway, like a lot of people, maybe after watching that, I got on a little bit of a Beatles kick. I found this song that maybe I've heard before. I think it's the last thing they probably ever recorded together. I can't prove that, but it feels like that. And it's so ironic that it's a guitar battle. Like what a perfect way for a band to end their legacy, let alone like the greatest band ever. All right, boys, it's time for a duel. You can just feel the energy. They recorded this obviously all in one room together. It was just a back and forth take and the magic is sprinkled within. This is the thing about listening to each of the Beatles, which is what I'm going to do is break down each of these guitar solos and get inside the minds of each one of these Beatles and see what they were thinking as they composed their, well compose is the wrong word because this was a completely improvised take. Let's get into the first lick of the guitar solo, which Paul kicks us off. It was his song, so I guess he decided to go first. This is actually the most difficult lick in the entire solo. <laughs> That is like one of the most badass entrances to a solo ever. That is awesome. So, what's going on here is really Paul's tendencies on display. It really makes me think of his just overall staccato nature when it comes to guitar solos. Like you think about Taxman right away with this intro. Those first few opening notes are really reminiscent of that staccato thing that he likes to do. And it's this really kind of thick finger tone. You can really hear Paul digging in on that part. Anyway, this lick I said is maybe the hardest of the solo. Check this out. That is harder than it looks. Cause you want this double stop to ring out. Have that note individual and then this little slide. If you play it like this, that's not right. And if you play it like this, it's not a blues slide, it's this whole step slide in this nice little A minor pentatonic box. But he's playing it. And with this little glissando, it really turns into a completely different timbre, which is why sometimes it's cooler to play a certain lick in a certain part of the guitar neck. It really just makes that lick what it is. And a little sidebar, a thing about Paul as a musician that I learned on the Howard Stern interview he did recently where he talked about learning music theory as if it was like something that he never even considered, it just wasn't in his DNA. That was probably the coolest part of the documentary as well, is just watching how the Beatles communicated as a band and just kind of spoke telepathically. So of course they didn't have to focus on learning music theory despite the fact that they knew it if they put names to faces so to speak they would know that this is a C major triad and they know what those notes sound like. So the point is, Paul knew music theory, he figured it out a different way. Anyway, I wouldn't say he's a guitar player first, but people who are this talented musically, it really enhances what he does on the guitar in juxtaposition to like what George would do as maybe a more traditional guitar player. Think about the harmony for Blackbird. <laughs> came out of Paul despite the fact that he didn't know music theory. <laughs> he basically walked up and down the major scale and all these diatonic chords and passing chords and all the while singing a beautiful song. I mean, it's just innate in some people is what I'm trying to tell you and the way Paul plays his guitar solos, it's just an innate thing that is so perfectly him and so much sums up guitar players who are brought up just on their own ear and with bands and things like that. As somebody who didn't take that path, it's always like refreshing to me to be like, I could never come up with that because I just learned a different way. That's not to say any path is better than the other one. It's just fun to broaden your horizons. Now, let's move along to the next Beatle. By far the coolest lick that George plays is this one. Nirvana, 
not the band, like musical Nirvana. Those bands, you can tell the Clapton influence, just like the slow blooming of the bands, and then also the bends coming back down is also a staple. So sometimes when you're playing these blues licks and these bends, you forget that you can come back down from the bend if you want. And you can kind of make it cry like that. That's like the Eric Clapton thing on While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and George really employs this technique in this guitar solo, and a lot of his guitar solos, really. You can really hear it stand out with these bends. I'm pretty sure he's using some kind of Les Paul or hot pickup where it's just this beautiful, clear, creamy sound. <laughs> clapped anything. So you can really hear the Clapton, but you can also hear the George in all these takes. You can hear Paul as the guitar player sort of taking the role of like the abrasive, maybe front man as far as his guitar voice is concerned. And George really fills in his role of the band, which is the lead guitar player. You can really distinguish George's phrasing and just his feel and the vibrato against Paul and John, who aren't guitar players first. They're great guitar players in their own right, but George has got those sweet, sweet bends, baby. Oh, now let's uh, move on to John. John was maybe the most difficult one for me to parse out exactly what he was doing because he had a really maybe big hollow body into a really distorted amp. And his licks were by far like the most, let me really emphasize, limited as far as the three different guitar players in the duel. Despite that fact, I think John won this guitar battle. And the reason for that is because he played the best lick in this guitar solo. Go on, leave a, leave a time stamp. What is the best guitar lick in this solo? And why is it this lick? <laughs> I mean, the way he plays it too, you'll notice my take on the Beatles guitar solos. It actually, it sounds really cool. It sounds a lot more like modern blues because I kind of learned on the Stevie Ray Vaughan method of blues bending perfectly in tune and kind of playing the rhythms right on the beat. The way that John in particular plays is just really, really draggy. You can tell that he's not doing too much because he hasn't spent a lot of technical practice time with the guitar but he's still such a great musician and has such an amazing sense of melody that the way he uses the guitar is just like he would use his voice, which is really ultimately our goal. So maybe you don't have to practice guitar like scales or arpeggios or all that crap at all. Maybe you just have to channel whatever it is inside you and make it come. Some people say music theory helps facilitate that channeling. Anyway, I'm getting off subject. This lick, just against the chords, if you think about what's going on with the harmony here, it's very simple. The entire time we're just going. We have just basically a flat seven, an A with a flat seven. And it's just this open kind of major sound because it goes to the D7. It's just a little blues vamp, a 1-4. The way he phrases that, where it's just like uh, an elephant saying It creates that stacked fourth kind of sound, and the fact that he's playing it on the thickest part of the guitar neck and really digging in. You can hear when he hits these first couple of notes, he's down here by the bridge, really getting that spank out of the sound. He doesn't botch that, but it's just kind of rushed. You know, there's no click, they're playing with a ton of energy. He, he falls out of that lick in such a perfect way, I cannot emulate it. Listen to the recording if you want to hear what I mean. But I'm basically interpreting his lick in time. So it's maybe what it would have been if I were John Lennon. But John's other contributions are these really crazy, like Chuck Berry-esque double stops where it's like, <laughs> And then at the end of the solo is just him going And it's just perfect rock and roll bliss this entire guitar battle 
I'm back to uh, I'm back to Paul. So there you have it, guys. My breakdown of the end, the last Beatles guitar battle, maybe the last Beatles moment ever captured in studio. I hope you enjoyed myself and my clones. Anyway, until next time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Get back. You you see what I did there? I get back is the name of the Beatles. <laughs>